Hey there, everybody in the FFPE Global Facebook group. Welcome to this week's Ask an Old Nog video, and hello to everybody who sees this video on YouTube as well. Uh, this week, I wanted to go off the script a little bit. I've been thinking a lot about something um, as I've been seeing some questions lately in the group, um, and it's gotten me thinking about character builds, um, like unit builds, like, you know, like ways we, we use certain units for different things. Because I see lots of times a question that's like, uh, hey, how do I build so and so, or how do I use this unit? You know, and my my answer to that question is almost always a like, universally. What are you building it for? Are you building it for a trial? Are you building it for clash of wills? Are you building it for, you know, what specifically is it? Because there's there are some units, m most units, you don't just have one build for. You know, you build for the content that you're doing. Um, but there are definitely some examples of some units that we always, well, that I almost always build a certain way when I'm doing something very specific with them. Um, and so I thought it might be neat to kind of showcase some of those builds. Now, I'm also going to open this question up to you guys um, in the group. So um, my question is, are there units that you use um, kind of all the time in a certain way for certain types of things? And like when you gear them, you almost always gear them the same way. Um, what do you use those units for? What what purpose do you have for them? Um, and so if you see this video, um, you know, I'm challenging you, show us the builds in a screenshot of what you use um, and, and tell us what you use them for. Uh, how, why you build them that way? You know, I want to get the I want to get some of the, the older players in the group, um, you know, talking about this. And if you're on YouTube seeing this, you know, definitely drop some comments because I want to see these questions. But to give you some examples of what I'm talking about, let's take a look at the game here. Here we are. So I've got this list of uh, you know four five characters on the screen, and I'm going to kind of show you. Um, you know, some builds that I've got them set up with, and, and in fact, some of them have very little gear in, on them right now, and some of them have a lot of gear, it's very specific. But I want to talk to you about what I use each one for, and, uh, you know, what circumstances I have them geared the way that I have them for. So here's Sylvie, um, and, and don't pay any attention to her, Esper, that doesn't really matter, I just kind of slapped Sylvie into, um, I slapped all these guys kind of into this this group, just to kind of show, show something. So let's take a look at Sylvie's equipment. Behold! Sylvie has nothing equipped except for her STMR. Um, and that is because Sylvie, by and large, is a utility character. She is going to be doing lots and lots of support, so you can gear her pretty much however you want, and it doesn't really matter. Most of the time, you know, if you've got Sylvie in your party, somebody else is your, probably your tank, somebody else is probably your provoker, somebody else is probably doing damage, uh, and you don't really need Sylvie to do that. So a lot of times when I bring Sylvie to like a, a guide video or something like that, Sylvie's not wearing anything but her STMR, and that's just to get triple cast unlocked for her because when she is in uh, a fully upgraded unit, um, she's got all of her stuff upgraded, she gets triple cast on turn one as long as she's wearing her TMR or STMR. So most of the time, that's all I've got her equipped with. So why do I include Sylvie as a utility character? Um, let's take a look here. She's got so many things you can do. She does actually have some magic that she can cast kind of naturally, uh, which is pretty cool. But then also she's got a lot of abilities like this one, Spring Cleaning. It boosts, it cures all of this, right? All these ailments and then boosts your resistance to all those ailments for five turns. Five turns is a long time to have a lot of utility and resistances. She can do breaks. She can do buffs. She can boost, um, she can boost your 100% lightning resist, stone resist, and light resist. She can give you um, barriers. She, and then my favorite one is she can use imperils or um, imperils and amplifies and imbues all in one skill. She's very, very compact. Bolt egg, gravel egg, glitter egg, three elements, you know, light, lightning, and earth. She can just give your whole party. Now, granted, it only lasts three turns, so you got to pay attention. But that's a pretty solid imperil. Most Neovisions units that are just kind of like imperiling their own element come with 120. She's got that as a seven star unit. Pretty sweet. Um, but even more, even more. My other favorite skills of hers. Here's a present. Um, and for me to from me to you, give other units skills. So here's a present gives the, the ability bunny kick, right? Not terribly strong, but it is, um, you know, it is some chaining. It's bolting strikes. So you can give anybody bolting strike chaining with this that they can triple cast because here's a present also gives here I go. It gives triple cast. Same thing for from me to you. It gives mystical egg. Bolting strike, but it's magic damage. So if you want to do a magic damage instead of physical, you can use mystical egg. 
pretty cool. Also gives triple cast, right? And then same thing. Uh, Cottontail, absolute mirror of equity, right? Actually does more damage um, than Bunny Kick. Pretty cool. But it's a weird chaining family. Okay. And then this one, got this for you. Absolute mirror of equity, but it's magic damage. So you can give chaining with her to any unit you want. She can do status immunity, right? Status break immunity. Pretty cool. And stop immunity. Very, very cool. Very useful. So she's lots of lots of utility, but we're still not done, right? She's got some relatively decent breaks. 80%. Not bad for getting started alongside buffs that, that go along with those breaks, right? Same with this one. Breaks, buffs, they go together. It gives her triple cast too. This one buffs everybody for like a little bit less. Gives resist, uh, stat break reduction, stop immunity, five turns. Um, and then also reduces stone enemy damage and gives her triple cast for six turns. Six turns of triple cast. So she's pretty easy to keep going triple cast all the time. We're still not done. You ever feel like you need a limit burst to be used on turn one immediately and you don't have like warring spirit and you just want to fill up somebody's limit burst gauge? All eggs in one basket. She can fill that LB damage uh, and fill the LB gauge to max on a single for you know one time use. Just like put everything in. There you go. They get all these amplifies um, for magic and physical damage for LB and abilities, and it fills the LB gauge and gives an LB damage boost. Solid, right? So so Sylvie is like a she's basically a Swiss Army knife character. She can do pretty much everything. If you if you you set her up for that, the only thing she's not really doing is damage, but she can technically, um, you know, give other units chaining skills. So if you need to to you know, put a bunch of units together and you're like, oh, I don't have I don't they don't have bolting strike though, I can't chain. Well, now you can because Sylvie can give that to them. Okay, very useful character for utility. Ling is the same way. Now, don't be alarmed at how I've got this Ling built. Um, she's built <laughs> she's built for speed. Okay, so this this particular Ling. Uh, is uh, got a lot of crazy stuff on, but but I want to show you something here. So if I go to her details, the way I've got her built, she's got fill full LB fill rate. She's got full LB fill per turn and fizz 100% physical evasion, and she provokes attacks. So she's got full provoke in her kit, and she's got some um, you know, elemental resistances across the board, which can be easily bumped up to 100 with a buff. Um, and she's got, you know, lots of good stuff there. Now I do have her built basically the same way in her shift form. Um, I just didn't change out the hat. Okay. But that lets her be very flexible, filling her own LB gauge so that you can use her skills because all of her skill, a lot of her good skills are keyed off of her LB gauge, um, and be like evasion provoking for your team. Very, very solid. And you know what? She does a lot of the same stuff Sylvie does just in a slightly better way. So she's got a Celestial Combo Step, which gives Chaining for Stardust Ray and Chaos Wave Awaken for the whole team all at once. Um, they're pretty cool. She's got Light Imbue, Fire Imbue, Evasion stacks that she can give the party, uh, four killers that she can give, LB Fill across the board. She does Morale Fill for Clash of Wills Healing, MP Fill, Lots of good stuff. And she can do um, re-raise and mitigation buffs and status immunity buffs and uh, so much good stuff. So Ling is another one of those Swiss Army Knife characters, but she's just basically seven-star Sylvie on steroids with different elements. And killers. Very, very useful. Okay. So then these other two. Uh, these are the three, actually. We're going to get to Chow in a second. He's, he's kind of like senior level version, okay? Um, but let's take a look at this one. Diggs and Wedge. Why do I have them in my team? So they've got a couple neat things going for them. Uh, first and foremost is they have uh, their magic cover tank, and they also um, uh, they do protective heart magic, which is a preemptive cover. So that so without even having to use anything, they're ready to start covering for your team. And so they're a really budget, easy way to have somebody covering magic attacks that uh, maybe pop up before you have a chance to use an ability. Sometimes though, that's a headache. Um, and so we uh, we brought, I'm going to show you a couple tricks to, to using this unit. So notice I've only got four things on them on this screen. Um, this is just their STMR. This is the flame gun, which is a fire elemental weapon. Uh, Genji glove to let them dual wield and Aurora scarf to let them um, uh, let, let their attacks trigger twice. Um, so if they have two weapons and they're wearing the Aurora scarf, they attack four times when you just single attack with them. And what's cool about that is they do tag team AOE chaining. So if you're um, having to do like a four-person team and you need a chainer 
and you don't have room for it because you don't, you know, maybe you're bringing two cappers. If you bring them with this build, they can do a quad um, AOE tag team chaining, which means that with just by clicking one button, they, you know, chain up a bunch of hits and then you can cap off of it. The elemental gun um, it could be any element you want. I happen to just put fire here, but that lets you build the chain faster so that they get the damage boost up as far as you can uh, within the limits of their chain. They don't get very many hits, but so you want to take advantage of, a, of an elemental chain if possible. Always go for an element that's the same chain as the uh, the element capper that you're using. So that's pretty cool. If you don't have an elemental weapon, you can always use an outside imbue like Sylvie or Ling to give them elemental chaining. The more elements you can cram into this thing, the better, and they're going to build the chain even faster. Um, if you don't have Aurora Scarf for some reason, it was given out for free when Lightning first came out to be a ne Neovisions Awaken. You could use um, Umaru's Yeti Combat Style instead. That makes your attack hit twice. So that will allow you to hit four times. Now, I said before that he's got preemptive magic cover. They've got preemptive magic cover, and that can sometimes be a little annoying. So what are you going to do about that? Well, if you have that problem, you can always bring the ability Rage Beast Roar. And if you cast that ability on turn one, this will dispel their um, pre preemptive cover and they will no longer cover magical attacks for you. Because sometimes you bring like a dedicated magic tank and you want them to cover attacks. This allows you to get rid of that. This is a trial reward. Anybody can get this at any point. Um, definitely pick that up. It's very, very useful for a lot of cool, um, a lot of cool builds and strategies. Very nice to have that on demand. Okay. So what do I bring them for? Tag team chaining, preemptive magic cover. Um, and then all their other ability slots and weapon slots or armor slots are free. You can kind of load them up with whatever you want. Killers if you really want to. Uh, but they're not really doing a ton of damage. They're just helping you cap. Shara. So I've got Shara here and I've got Shara geared with a bunch of neat stuff that fills the LB for, per turn. Um, to full okay so what's neat about this is uh, shara has an ability um and trust that shara can use that every turn to give somebody shara's lb gauge and the way it works is you give your one you give 100 of your gauge so if you've got a 100 full gauge and you give it to somebody who's completely empty no matter how many crystals it takes to fill your gauge or their gauge it fills the lb up 100 when you give them 100 of yours since he's got an LB gauge that only costs 10, 10 crystals, you divide this by 100. Um, so um, 10 only costs 10 crystals, and he's getting, all right, 12 a turn. He's got a full LB gauge every turn and can dump his LB gauge into any unit he wants to fill that LB. Now, he's very squishy. Um, he's, he's only three stars right now. He's very, very squishy but that allows him to be a really great utility support for your team. Um, and so, you know, he's somebody that you want to make sure you're having somebody provoke or cover, cover attacks off of him to make sure he doesn't die. But in a pinch, he could be used to fill your LB gauge very, very easily, if, especially if you've got like a stacking unit that needs to stack up every turn. Um, depending on what you're doing, you might be able to fit Shara and your team to help you fill up the gauge. Okay, now the last one I want to talk about is Chow. Um, Chow is time limited, so uh, I know I know a lot of players aren't going to be able to replicate this, and this this build does use a lot of time limited stuff as well. But this is this is the build that you usually run for Chow to do a bunch of counters in Clash of Wills. I see people you know sometimes say like, how do you get Chow to counter so many times like this? Um, so Chow's Chow's counter you know fills the morale gauge in Clash of Wills, um, and you want as many counters as possible. So the best way to do that is to give Blizzard orbs, Cipher's Discipline coat and this ability looming wrath um all of that uh, well the coat is limited looming wrath is limited these are stmrs so like they're a little hard to come by if you don't have looming wrath you can also use something called proof of talent right this is a regular tmr and it boosts the activation of counter abilities by 25 percent is that as good as looming wrath well it's 25 percent less so it's not like the absolute best, um, but it is a thing. Blizzard Orb does the same basic thing. Power of the Blizzard Orb. Uh, it increases the counter rate by 30% for each one. Um, so, you know, that's 60% right there. Um, Cypher's Discipline Coat does 50%. You know, and then the Looming Wrath does 50%. So it, you, you want as much as you can. Proof of Talent is just another way to do that. Okay. 
But then you've got all your slots left to fill Chao with whatever you need to for survivability, and that's going to let Chao counter a bunch of hits all at once um, during Clash of Wills, which is super, super good in Clash of Wills. But like I said, this this build is, you know, it's for the advanced player who's been around and has those time-limited items, but that's how you do it. So these are just examples. I want to know more from you guys. Like I said, you know, what are some things that you use when you're gearing your units for specific things? So I want you to share with us in the comments, uh, you know, post a screenshot, post a description of what you use them for. What are your like go-to utility characters when you're trying to do something? Um, you know, I want to know more about what you guys do so that new players can know more about that too. Um, and then maybe they've got some ideas of how to build units and, and what to use them for that aren't necessarily tied to a specific piece of content. Um, kind of a random question, kind of a random thought I've been thinking about a lot lately, you know, trying to help you guys out with different builds that are kind of like regularly available for like use that aren't necessarily tied to a specific trial. That's what I got. So yeah, hope you guys have a good rest of your day and a really good weekend. And we'll see you in next week's video, um, which is going to be coming to you through the magic of time, uh, time travel. How, what, what's that about? Like, uh, I don't even, I don't even know. We'll see. Hmm.